we hiked up a nice grassy hill near the village, and then proceeded to beat the ever-loving crap out of each other. You see, whenever you got into a fight, you got a couple of points towards leveling, win or lose. Only problem is that most characters couldn't spar against each other, as they kill each other pretty quickly. Elemental attacks and weapons combined had huge damage multipliers, so sparring would quickly end up with people dead. We didn't have any weapons, and unarmed combat would take days of wailing on someone to actually kill them. The only reason Squid was alright was because of his firepower. So, as long as we didn't use any spirit, we could beat each other silly, pass out, wait a while to heal, and then do it all over again. It was stupid, it was cheesy, and it pissed everyone off. But it fucking worked. Some said that the shadows would attack us, but we were just close enough to the village that they couldn't. I'm still not sure why Ciro or even the mods let us get away with this shit. I guess they didn't see it as anything to be actually worried about. Eventually we leveled up though. It was a slow process and there were better ways of leveling, but this was all we had. Plus it gave me another fuck ton of spirit points. Edgardo pumped up strength first, and evenly distributed the rest. I got a power to double the rate at which he gained spirit per day. I had a plan. Squid just buffed his fire fists. That was a good way to go. Now we just had to find somewhere to rest up properly. Somewhere to regroup. We couldn't just stay and wail on each other for another level. We had gotten lucky the first time, but now there was talk of a few other players jumping us. We had to move. Neither of us knew where the hell we were going or what we were doing. We just hit the road and tried to get as far away from Ciro and everyone else as we could. The mods fucked with us for the first few days, but eventually they just got bored and left us alone. Sometimes they'd throw a few shadows our way, but it was nothing we couldn't handle. Random events just stopped happening for us. I think it was mainly due to us not really bugging anyone anymore. We were doing our own thing, so everyone just sort of forgot about us. Except Ciro. He was still mighty pissy about me living this long. I have no idea what his deal was. Maybe it was just the challenge to his authority that I represented. Or maybe he was just a colossal prick. Either way, once we left his authority zone or whatever, he sent one of his lackeys after us. A quick look at his character sheet and I knew just how much Ciro hated us. His name was Golden Harl, and the dude was basically invincible. Magic armor let him resist all elements massively, plus it was super light so he could fly around and do his ninja flippy shit. He could heal himself completely by spending a couple of spirit, and his spirit refreshed basically whenever he wanted it to. It was official, the mods just didn't give a shit. Oh and we were screwed too. All we could do was keep going forward and hope he didn't catch up to us. He did, and damn quick too. He met us while we were traveling along a gorge, and promptly tried to knock me over the side. Goldenhall wasn't fucking around. No words, only pain. He meant business. I barely managed to dodge him, which was of course met with public outcry, but I was dangerously close to the edge. Squid tried a fire punch with a couple of spirit behind it. No cell, and Goldenhall got a free counterattack because fuck you, he's Goldenhall. Squid is knocked down, but it gave me an opening. I grabbed Golden Harl by his waist and gave him a suplex. My high strength let me get in a few points of damage, and it put me in a better position. It didn't really matter though, as he's back up and fully healed a second later. I helped Squid up, but we're pretty much already dead. Golden Harl finally spoke up. Any last words? Banzai! The fucker was wide open, and his back was at the edge of the cliff, too. A quick PM to Squid was all it took, and the plan went off like clockwork. Squid ran diversion, going high for a fire punch to the face. Golden Harl didn't bother to dodge. He was invincible after all. He forgot one thing. Raw spirit can't be resisted. Edgardo went in for a gut punch, with all that built up spirit from the training and the road. It wasn't enough to kill Golden Harl, not by a long shot. but. It was enough to knock him backwards, and that last step was a doozy. Golden Harl fell down into the canyon, and we only stayed long enough to hear the dull thud of him hitting the ground. 
I could practically hear Ciro grinding his teeth to powder as he tattled to the mods, who really didn't care enough to do anything. Surprisingly, I barely heard anything from Golden Harl's player. Just a simple PM saying, well played. I almost felt sorry that he had to meet his end like that. After that, we were pretty much free to keep going until we hit another village. Ciro couldn't get to us here, so no shield and no bullshit. We could finally rest. Well, maybe. We were still broke. And there was a small army of players after us. Apparently, Golden Harl was a pretty popular character, and by killing him, we were now at the top of everyone's hit list. Fantastic. Squid slept in an alley, and I kept watch, trying to get a plan together. We had basically come to sort of an unspoken agreement. Squid was tired of Ciro's shit, and so was I. We wanted him dead, and broken. The problem was that two low-level characters could do fuck all against the guy. His level was literally listed as an infinity sign. When Squid took watch, I read over the fluff of the setting, looking for something, anything that could help us. I found it in the city of Haven. Haven was the second biggest city in the setting, just barely smaller than Ciro's place. It was kind of a big deal though. See, it was home to the Spirit Well. The Spirit Well was a font of power that everyone flocked to. As long as you were in Haven, your spirit points recharged instantly, up to your cap. I didn't have a cap. I still wonder how anybody in their right mind missed this little detail of overflowing spirit. It was just set up so perfectly. Maybe I was being a massive that guy for exploiting this like I did, but I really don't care. Everyone but a few people were complete assholes, and I wanted their little club destroyed. It was petty. It was stupid. And it was probably hurtful to a few people. But Edgardo had a mission and a guy called Squid was going to help him see it through. If they ever got to Haven in One Piece. I swear, we were the only two people following the traveling rules, because the horde of players chasing us caught up to us a lot quicker than they should have. We had half a day to rest up before we had to hit the road again. I was useless without a buildup of spirit, and Squid could only fend off so many before he'd die. The only route to Haven was a long winding road through the mountains, and we'd be ambushed if we tried to set up camp anywhere. It'd take too long, and time wasn't on our side. So Edgardo had a crazy idea. What if they climbed over the mountains? It was basically suicide, as the random events were especially harsh in that terrain. However, no one would follow us. After all, something might happen to their super special characters. Squid was on board, and he brought up an interesting point. The mods were ignoring us. Everyone was so pissed off at us, but in the grand scheme of things, we hadn't really done anything major. We killed a grand total of two characters through sheer luck and broken mechanics, and I had basically given their idol Ciro a giant middle finger for simply surviving as long as I had. And Ciro could only suck so much cock. So we started climbing, making rolls and getting through by the skin of our teeth. Every once in a while a mod would glance over and make shit hard for us, but overall we didn't have that much trouble. That's because trouble was waiting for us on the other side of the mountain. From our perch, we got a view of the players coming for us. There was no way we could take them all, and if we waited, they'd just get to Haven and wait for us there. And then there was the guy waiting just underneath us. Golden Harl, back from the dead. They must have fished him out of the canyon and had him rezzed. Or maybe he survived the fall and healed. Who knows? We know he saw us, but he didn't move. He could have just jumped up here anytime he wanted and murdered us right then and there. But he didn't. After a while, Squid got tired of waiting. He climbed down and Edgardo followed to have his back in case things went south. Squid asked him what he wanted. Golden Harl just wanted to talk. Turns out, he had more to his story than we knew about. Golden Harl was in this RP just as long as Ciro was. And frankly, he was tired of Ciro's shit. Golden Harl earned everything he had, and didn't need to resort to whining to the mods to get what he wanted. When we asked why he tried to kill us, he said that it was either follow Ciro's orders, or get his shit shoved in. 
In a one-on-one -on -one fight, Golden Harl just couldn't compete. Mainly because Zero could do whatever the fuck he wanted and no one batted an eye. After we killed him, he was basically done. He was satisfied with the ending he got. But instead, Zero revived him and set him to kill us again. Golden Harl had other plans, though. Squid was suspicious, but I believed him. I'm still not sure why, maybe I was desperate, but I told him our plan. Technically, I told everyone our plan, as it was in one of the public threads. I'm an idiot, sue me. Golden Harl said he could get us to Haven. His story was over, and he sees giving a single fuck about what anyone else would say about this. He only had one condition. We had to promise we'd kill Zero and end this, once and for all. Edgardo and Squid agreed. This was our only shot, and we weren't about to throw it away. A massive shitstorm erupted from the player base as we joined up with Golden Harl. Ciro called him a traitor to everything the RP stood for, and everyone made such a fuss that the mods nearly banned the guy. Golden Harl had a bit of sway with the mods too, and he got lucky as shit when they took his side when he pointed out that he had done nothing wrong. With the mods appeased, that just left the army of players gunning for us. The second we hit the road, they were on us. There was no fucking around anymore, and the travel rules were basically out of the picture. A horde of super-powered loners and misfits charged toward us, flinging fire and lightning and all manner of weapons. All of them driven by their singular hatred of Edgardo, a guy called Squid, and the traitor Golden Harl. Golden Harl weathered the tide, taking kunai and fireballs and shadow spears without so much as flinching. Because fuck you, he's Golden Harl. Me and Squid ran behind Golden Harl as he cleared a path, getting us to the other side of the army. As we kept going down the path, Golden Harl stayed behind, covering our escape. To this day, I do not know if he survived or not. I will never forget his bravery. Since everyone else was doing it, we ignored the travel rules ourselves, arriving in Haven near instantly. Ciro bitched. Nobody heard him. There was one last obstacle though, one last player. Kane, the Shadow Mancer. This fucking guy. He had a power letting him control Shadow. His interpretation of what this actually did was very, very loose. And since he was in Haven, he could abuse it like nobody's business. As soon as we set foot in the city, Squid and me instantly get paralyzed. We call him out on his bullshit. I'm not sure why. I control the darkness in people's hearts, the darkness in everyone's soul. You are mine. Oh, eat a bag of dicks. Squid tells him that's not how it works. Kane isn't listening, because it's his power, and he says that's how it works, and wah! Meanwhile, I just sit back and ask myself a question. Why can't I hold all this spirit? I spend infinite spirit and break Kane's hold. Praise for whining. How? You can't resist me. The darkness is in everyone's heart. Okay, it's Edgardo's turn to be cheesy. You are wrong. My soul is a shining beacon filled with a light and a burning hope that no shadow can touch. It is a pinpoint of justice, a shining star that will deliver freedom to the universe. I will root out the darkness, the evil of this land. No shadow will be spared my light. Kane just can't comprehend how he's about to lose. He tries the shadow paralysis thing again. No cell, infinite spirit. Who the hell do you think you're dealing with? Banzai! Swift uppercut, battle cry, unlimited raw spirit punch. Kane gets punched into the sun. Cue shit being lost by absolutely everyone again. Squid is okay, so we rest up and figure out our next move. My ultra power only works if I'm in Haven. That doesn't do us a lot of good. Squid finds out that Haven's unlimited spirit effect lingers for a day after we leave. Ciro is weeks away in his city. More players are on their way to Haven, and even though I have infinite spirit, I can only use it to punch people. I'll get killed eventually. We're basically stuck. Until I notice that we've leveled up. I don't really give a fuck about my stats at this point, but there is a power that really catches my eye. Teleportation. I have exactly enough points to purchase it. 
Normally I wouldn't have enough spirit to use it, but Haven, so it works. Squid upgraded his fire punch. It was a good way to go. I tell Squid that he can stay behind. This is going to be dangerous and we might not come back. He tells me that he's with me to the end and that he intends to see this thing through and that he's got my back no matter what. In the middle of town square, Edgardo and a guy called Squid shared a sweaty, shirtless, muscly, manly hug for all the world to see. It was super homo. Actually, we just had to be touching so I could teleport us both, but shut up. We arrived outside the city, and the shield was still up. Zero mocked us, saying that he was invincibly behind his wall, and that we couldn't do anything. Huh. This shield can withstand 1,000 times the force of anything you could possibly throw at it. People just keep forgetting. Raw spirit can't be resisted. By anything. I'll just have to hit it a thousand and one times harder. Bonsai! I still flinch whenever I remember typing that. So damn cheesy. One more battle cry, blow infinite spirit, and... Nothing. Not a damn thing. Ciro refused to post in the actual RP after that. I think he had a stroke or something. He posted plenty in the discussion threads though. Everyone did. The entire community spammed the forums, declaring that I should be banned, flayed, and hung for my shenanigans. The next day when I tried to log in, I found that the forums had been shut down due to popular opinion. I never saw Squid after that. We never exchanged emails or anything. I like to think that Edgardo is still frozen in that moment in time, his fist crashing through the shield and connecting with Ciro's big stupid face. And Edgardo is smiling. He won. He and Squid and Goldenharl. They won. Hi guys! Thanks for checking out the Ballad of Edgardo. If you want to read the original story, click the link on the video or in the description. This episode was illustrated by the very talented Pool Votbara. Please check out their other stuff. Every episode will give a shout out to a story that didn't quite make the cut, but which we still feel deserves a mention. Today's honorable mention goes to Doomsday Mages, a story about role players thinking one step further than their game master.